Hey, this is Mel Taylor. Um, you're watching the online prosperity show with Prosper, uh, where I'll be discussing the Resilient Warrior series and stories. Thank you. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the online prosperity show. And today we've got the resilient warrior and motivator himself. Melvin, how are you doing, my man? Prosper, I'm very good, my friend. Thanks for having me on your show today. I'm excited about this. I'm all the way live in Australia. This is big. Fantastic. Well, it doesn't get any bigger than this, I tell you that. All right. So, Melvin, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this show, um, you know our mission and our efforts is to help you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And that does not come without its own uh, hardships. So, in life, you really got to be resilient and you really got to find ways in which, um, you know, you can knock through all those hardships that come your way and still keep going. Now, that's the reason why we bring in experts like Melvin to come in and share, first of all, their experience, their story and their own resilient advice so that you two can either have a business that's profitable, enjoyable or have a life that is of a happier existence. Now, Mel. Can you tell us a little bit about your story and how the whole resilient warrior and motivation came about? You know, um, this whole thing started for me, you know, um, when uh, an idea popped in my head to write my first book, you know, so I kept pushing it away for a while. And the more I kept pushing the idea away, the more, you know, the characters in the book were screaming out to me to be introduced to the public and, and to be heard. You know, along the way, when I wrote my first book, I lost my dad. You know, when I started the second book, I lost my mom. I could have quit there. But, you know, I just kept persevering, kept bouncing back, saying, the vision popped in my head. I have to complete it, and I don't want to stop doing it. So me writing the first and completing both books, you know, I've touched a lot of people in a lot of positive ways, and they see that what I've gone through, I haven't stopped, you know, pursuing uh, my goals and whatever visions I have in my head. So along the way, I've met a lot of other people going through their, you know, trials and tribulations that's reached out to me and asked, what did I do? How did I go about doing it? I just basically said, hey, I'm no different from you. <laughs> I put on my pants the same way you do. You know, it's just a matter of the fact that I said I'm going to do something and I'm going to pursue it, you know, no matter what happens. You know, Understand so Understandable. I and um, yeah. So sorry for, for the loss of your parents, especially, I mean, not especially, but both of them. Right. Um, I also lost my mom and I can testify that it's not an easy place to be because the mom is usually the cornerstone and the pillar of the whole family. And Agreed. once you've lost your mom, you've disintegrated. So yeah. let us know how you then coped and overcame these losses um, in your life and how you then decided this was going to be something you could help other people through? I um, buried myself in the task of creating the books. Um, I spoke about a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of um, hurtful things within the books, you know, a um, couple of characters in the books I dedicated to my parents, my grandfather as well. And by escaping through, you know, through the book itself, it was a way for me to uh, deal with the stuff that I was going through. You know, I would, you know, describe uh, my characters, certain characteristics uh, that I remember of my parents, things of that nature. And that's just a way for me to escape, uh, to get all the stuff off my chest. So that writing the books, um, you know, for me and just escaping from that was very therapeutic and very helpful for me. So, you know, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, so in the first book, um, you know, The Kindred Spirit, um, we have a journey of Xavier and, um, you know, River Jordan in their early life, you know, going through all these trials and tribulations, the abandonment and all that tragedy in their life. What was going through you while you were, um, you know, writing this as, as, as a writer? Um, a lot of uncertainty because of the fact that I've never written a book before. So this was actually the first book that I was writing. I um, doubted myself a lot. <laughs> a lot. Um, I second-guessed myself a lot too. 
And um, it, it's just a matter of me just digging deep inside and, and, and just visualizing the thoughts that I had in my head to just, you know, write sentences and just bring all these thoughts to life. You know, so fortunately, me writing the books uh, or writing the first book, um, you know, um, Rivers Return, The Kindred Spirits, Rivers Return, that was a way for me to just, you know, say, hey, let me let this book become my reality and step away from the real stuff that I was going through. And me doing that was very therapeutic for me to just escape and um, cope with the, the, the tragedy of, of losing um, my dad at that particular time. Because I lost my mom when I was on, on the second book. Right. So obviously, just still dwelling on, on you know, the Kindred Spirits, uh, River's story there. Um, you have, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel when, you know, they start, when the boys, you know, move to New York City and, you know, it's no longer doom and gloom. Is, is that something that you wish upon the people that you're working with and the platform that you're bringing that where you are is, is, is temporary. You, there is hope at the end of the day. Uh, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. It's a matter of your faith. You know, you just have to go through the, the tough um, hurdles in life and, and um, realize if it doesn't kill you, it's only going to make you stronger. You know, so the journey that the characters went through, I was also going through it emotionally, loss of parents and finding a way to um, come out of it and, and to um, become a lot stronger from it um, in, in essence. You know, so, um, you know, those characters really helped me <laughs> to get through what I was going through, you know, because it's through their strengths, you know, as I was, you know, writing um, the book and I would say, okay, okay, these guys are turning it around. So it shows that they're getting a lot stronger from, from the loss that they've gone through. You know, they decided to, hey, you know, um, we have each other. Our parents have moved on. So let's just work to better ourselves and take things to the next level. And right. also come closer together as a result of that. Great stuff. So Melvin, now you have gone on to create a platform where other people can learn off and also, you know, learn this whole resilience and realize that where they are is not going to be the beat and and all. Do, how do people relate to the storyline, especially with the, with the kindred spirit, or do people give you some sort of feedback to say this resonates with what's going on in their life? Because the question here is a lot of people don't realize they're going through a hard time up until they step out of it or somebody notices it and they right, right. then don't do anything to get out of it. So do people, how do people relate to this story that you created? Yeah. Right, right, right. You know, there's that saying, one door closes, another one opens. But until you go into that other door that's open, you're stuck in the hallway. So the worst part in life sometimes is being stuck in that hallway. So until you realize, hey, I got to get the heck out of the hallway, go into the other door, a lot of my blessings are going to be waiting for me. So through my books, through book signings, um, a lot of, there was an interesting story um, when I was actually doing a book signing. There's a woman that, you know, waited online. Uh, she purchased the book. I signed it. And then she came over to me and kind of was just reading the plot. Uh, you know, just the trailer on the back of the book. And she teared up. I said to her, what happened? Were you okay? She said, I actually just lost a relative. You know, and it touched my heart because there are a couple of things in the book that spoke to her of what she was actually going through you know, the, the untimely death, you know, she's wondering what this family member is going through. And, and, and she really just teared up and cried for a little while. And that was really, um, I didn't expect it. So it really caught me off guard. And then even though it's fiction, there is reality in there, which is, you know, a lot of the um, stuff that I wanted to, to, to shed light on. You know, no one talks about the afterlife. No one talks about a lot of things. So I wanted to draw, pull the curtain back on those things and set some, set some, shed some light on it so um in my travels um you know a lot of i get a lot of feedback from people how they visualize the characters how um they can totally relate to the characters how they wonder what a loved one is doing in the other life are they restless let's say like uh, one of the characters was in my book so you know meeting these people and discussing the book with them you know made me realize the fact that 
again, even though it's fiction, there's a lot of truth in there. So um, me going through what I went through and the characters being able to overcome what they've also overcome, this also proved to these people that in this lifetime, whatever, as you said, you're going through, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. And just, you know, be a resilient warrior, bounce back, anything that comes your way, if it's not killing you, you're only gonna get stronger as a result of this. So stay in faith, stay on your faith walk, believe in what you're doing. And if you need to reach out to mentors, people that are going through the same struggles or similar struggles, that's a support group. Use each other to help each other. Cause it's not about me, it's about we collectively. So this platform that I'm building is to remind everyone of the fact that, hey, you know, a lot of, uh, we're all alike. We're all going through whatever it is we're going through. Let's collectively work together to help each other to get better at the end of the day, if that makes any sense. Oh, sure. It does make a whole lot of sense. And thank you so much for that, Mel. Right. So you did mention earlier on that you were not sure what you were writing. You were not sure how it was going to be perceived. It was the first book you've ever written. Right. Good thing you could write and spell. Some of us can't even do that. (laughs) But then you've now created this thing. How does it, now make you feel just going back to the part when maybe you could have stopped yourself and you were not resilient and looking Mm -hmm. back now to what you have now created um Mm -hmm. how does that really make you feel as a person that it's a good thing that i kept becoming resilient with what i went on look at what i've created given the stories that you now have of the people that are on your platform exactly the best thing i could say is that you know, I'm glad I completed it because here I am today and I'm on the online prosperity show speaking to prosper. So without that, I would not have had these opportunities. So completing the book back then, um, you know, basically set me up to help a lot of other people along the way. So I can't, as I look back over my shoulder, I can't see me not finishing the first book because I pushed the idea, there's that expression, what you're seeking is seeking you. Sometimes what you're not seeking is also seeking you. The book was seeking me and I was trying to run away from it. (laughs) I finally turned and embraced it and that's how my blessing came to me. So again, um, whatever pops in your head, do it. You know, um, because as you're helping yourself, you're having, helping a lot of people along the way as well. You know, so I, I could not not see me complete it because the more I push it away, the more the ideas, the more the characters in the book, if that makes any sense, was screaming out to me to be introduced to the public. So I had to find a way to get it done, basically. And I knew once that, that when the idea popped in my head, it came as a, as a, as a tri- 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 trilogy. I can't finish one and not complete the third, the third in the set. So two and one is done. Three, you know, I'm just looking for it to eclipse one and two and answer all the questions that are left open in one and two intentionally. So closure will be in the third book. I don't, I don't know if there'll be a fourth book, but I want the third book to answer every single thing that book one and two did not complete. Understandable. So there is a hint for a new book coming up. Now we were we were still <laughs> we were still um, you know marinating on Kindred Spirit, um, exactly. the second one. So right. what's what's the third one you're talking about now? This is a bit interesting, there, Melvin. Yeah, the third one is a, is the third book in the series, and uh, I don't want to disclose the title yet. But you know, I intentionally left a lot of open items in book one, book two. You know, so this book will be like, you know, the bow on top of the, the flowers or, or the gift. This will just tie all book one, two, three together so that anyone that has, and they'll also be, it'll also be a standalone book. So you can read the third one and understand it, but to really get the third one, you've got to read the first and second. So fingers crossed, uh, and I, you know, I'm really putting a lot into it. Um, I've been doing it now for about four or five months. You know, I've got about 10 chapters in. So, um, you know, just slowly but surely, you know, writing away to make sure the way I see it here comes out the way I I put it on paper. So it's a process. Understandable. Well, congratulations in advance. Maybe we might, um, you know, invite you 
um, when you're doing your book tour or your book launch so that you can also, um, you know, introduce your book to our audience here. Now, Melvin, you, you use this statement a lot. Resilience defies the impossible. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Can you explain what you actually mean by that? Um, resilience defies the impossible. What that means to me is in life, we're going to get knocked down. Whether it's a loss of a child, whether it's uh, a near death experience, whether it's, uh, you know, um, being on drugs, whatever it could be. That means anything that knocks you down, you get yourself up, you dust yourself off and realize that it didn't kill you. There's still a lot in front of you. There's still a lot that you have to accomplish in life. So like a rubber band, you know, you get knocked down, you get hurt, you get scuffed up, just get up, clean yourself off, focus on whatever it is that you've got to focus on to get yourself better, to get to the next level in life. You know, resilient warrior is someone that doesn't quit, someone that's determined, someone that is focused, someone that has a goal, you know, after going, all, all, going through all these um, obstacles in, in their lives, basically. So it's non-quitter and, and you know, um, just talking about and, and sharing, you know, your stories, whatever really hurts you, you know, that's, that's to me is a resilient warrior. Understandable. Now, Melvin, I mean, obviously humans are creatures of habit. And it's in our habits that then determine, are we going to be resilient at doing this particular thing or actually have the stick to itiveness to mm -hmm. see ourselves through? Is there any sort of habits that you prescribe to that have helped you be, do and have what you've now created um, or sure. that you can also help other people to start instilling in their day-to-day -day activities so that they too can either have a business that's profitable and enjoyable or a life that's of a happier existence? Sure, no problem. Core values. I created a vision board um, four years ago, roughly. A vision board four years ago. I wrote every single thing down on my vision board that I wanted to do, whether it's long-term or short-term. And Imagine you have all your stuff written down so you know what your journey is, you know your destination. Imagine you're riding in a car, you're driving in a car going to work. Your job is your destination. How do you get to your job? You have to put gas in your car. You have to get dressed, brush your teeth, uh, you know, um, drive to work. So the destination is, on, you know, is my vision board. So I know these are the things that I want to accomplish um, you know, to get to wherever it is I want to get to. If it's to become a doctor, if it's to become a writer, if it's to become uh, an optometrist, whatever it is you want to pursue. And when you complete something on your vision board, even, even if it's to lose weight, check it off your list. Do the short-term things that you have to do to get to the long-term goals. Whether it's, uh, you know, you want to become um, um, a business person, you know. So put on your, your vision board, I want to become a business person then write the steps that you take to do it. Research the industry that you want to be in. Take a look at your competition. Um, create, you know, uh, social media platforms. You know, get business cards. Become proficient and knowledgeable about the business that you want to get into. So it starts with your vision. Um, you know, and for me, as I said, I, I really stress the vision board because I see that now everything that I have on my vision board, I look at it before I, when I wake up in the mornings, I look at it before I go to bed at night. And I instill in me, you know, and these ideas goes into my subconscious so that when I wake up in the mornings, I look at it again, and I walk every day towards completing those things on my vision board. And I know once they're completed, I'm a little closer to whatever it is that I said I'm striving towards. So that helps me out tremendously. Great stuff, thank you so much. You know, I was just thinking to myself, whoa, vision board. Um, I used to have one, but the dog ate it. And <laughs> smart, smart dog. <laughs> <laughs>
Great stuff. All right. So obviously, Mel, we've been talking quite a while. People are sort of now drawn into what it is that you do and how you are, you know, helping them transform their negative experiences um, into positive reflections of themselves while they're becoming resilient in the process. How can people get a hold of you then? Sure. Um, um, you know, I've got my website, um, melvinataylor.com. You know, um, I have my Instagram, which is at Melvin A. Taylor, and my IG also is at M uh, Melvin A. Taylor. I've got a website, which is off the Melvin A. Taylor. I have a Facebook uh, group, which is the Resilient War Community, and my email is melvin at melvinataylor.com. Understandable. And, mm -hmm. Yep, and, and also my uh, record label info is at, at uh, my website is uh, 45recordsentertainment.com as well. So I'd also have a record label too, in addition to, you know, writing books and stuff. Understandable. So it's a whole artistic family. And I hear it's your son that is the musician that inspired this music uh, uh, studio, right? I exactly, exactly. As you said a little while ago, yes, I am very protective of my kids. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> my parents historically are um, disciplinarians, we're disciplinarians. So, you know, um, my, my brother's a doctor, my, other, my sister's a nurse, and my other sister's also a writer. So when my son said to me, Dad, I don't want to go to school, I'm like, eh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. So he had to convince me that he wanted to pursue music. He showed me how serious he is about it. So I said, you know what, son, I'm going to support you, so let's just create a label together. You know, you can be the artist or you can be on the administrative side, either or. So either way, you know, hopefully no time soon, but if anything happens to me, it's there for you you know, so you can just continue to build it uh, as you're going. So right. I'm excited, you know, you know, hopefully I'll have a, a professional musician on my hand soon. Understandable. Well, kudos to you for doing that for your kids. And, you. Um, you know, obviously it, it then builds that resilience in them, knowing that they've got all that support that they actually uh, need to be doing and have, um, you know, the lifestyles that they are going to be choosing. Now, is this, is this record label open to the public or is it just for your son right now up until he's a very famous musician and we <laughs> have to, we all have to trip, stumble and fall to get an autograph? No, no, I've got two other artists on the label besides my son. Uh, my son is working, um, you know, working on his craft to perfect it a little bit more. I've got two other artists. One has some stuff. It's in the hip hop arena. I don't know if your audience is into hip hop, but it's in the hip hop arena. Uh, so I've got one artist that we put a couple of things out on him. So he's in a sense um, shedding light on 45 Records uh, Entertainment. He's the one that's putting us on the map in, in essence. And my son is going to be the one to bring it home later on down the road. That's how I see it. All right. Well, in the meantime, we're going to be anticipating an audio book, motivational tips from you <laughs> since you already have a studio in-house. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Well, Melvin, I can't thank you enough for your time and especially your knowledge, your expertise and the value that you just dropped on this show today. And viewers, if you've been watching this show um, you would appreciate that people of, you know, the caliber that Melvin is at already a two times bestseller and is about to be writing his um, third book, which he tried to tell us a little bit about, um, but, you know, we, he couldn't divulge the secrets. We Correct. are going to, you know, employ the CIA or the FBI to figure out <laughs> what are the details of the third book. But, um, right. In life, we've all noticed from what Melvin has gone through, um, the loss of his parents that did not deter him from being the greatest dad of which he's now creating, um, you know, a life for his um, son right there. Despite whatever life or trials and tribulations that you might be going through, um, resilience defies the impossible, according to what Mel says. You know what I mean? And it's all about inspiring um, yourself and others that are around you to just transform that negative experience into positive reflections of right. you yourself and those that are around you. Mel, thank you so much for your time today. Right. And um, I hope um, with the details that you've given us, uh, people will be, um, you know, slamming on your door, um, mm -hmm. you know, to find out more how, uh, more about how they too can be resilient. Thank you so much there. No problem. Thank you, my friend, for having me. Uh, cheers and, and good health. Nice one.